Check out what we just made with our friend Rosemary Reeve, the author of Starting with a Quart of Tomatoes. And in this video, she's going to teach you how you can make this as well. Hey Provident Preppers, I'm Sam. Welcome back to another episode of Frugal Friendly Foods. Today, we are joined by a friend and a very special guest, Rosemary Reeve. Um, if that name sounds familiar, it's because we've done one of her recipes from her book, starting with a quart of tomatoes, in a previous video where we made cowboy casserole. So today, she is joining us here, um, and she is going to help take us through chili renato? Relleno? Relleno <laughs> crepes. I never get it right. But um, one quick note before we get to work, if you haven't checked out her book yet, you really should. Um, go ahead and follow the link in the description to go find that. But it's really cool. The thing about tomatoes is they're actually very easy to grow. They're fairly easy to can, would you say? Oh, yes. You think so? Uh -huh. um, and the best part is, in this book, she outlines those things. Um, there's lots of good recipes to follow um, what you can do with those tomatoes. Fairly inexpensive as a food, even with the, um, with the store canned tomatoes. Um, but if you wanted to can your own tomatoes, this has information on that as well. So you think we should get started? I get think to work? we should. Let's All get right. cooking. Let's do it. So crepes are a great way to wrap up savings on your food dollar. And they always go in essentially three different components. It's a three, four, five meal. So you have three components to serve four people for about five bucks. So you start with your sauce, and then your crepes, and then your filling. So to start with our sauce, we need a pot, a non-reactive pot, because we're making a tomato sauce on about medium heat. So we've got our, so our, our pot, and would you turn that on medium heat, Sam? Yes. And then we're gonna need about a tablespoonful of oil. And we're using olive oil, you can use any, any oil. And I'm gonna put about a tablespoonful in there and I'm just measuring with my eye. But we've got about a tablespoonful in there. And we're gonna just let that come up to a nice slow temperature. If I can put the, the lid back on, I assume that's, that's appropriate. And then we've got about two tablespoons full of uh, minced onions. And we're gonna use some of these onions in our filling. So we're not gonna hit the pot off. We're gonna use about two tablespoons full here. And then a clove of minced garlic. And we're just gonna let those sweat in the oil. And we want to let those um, gently cook all of the garlic in um, until the onion is translucent. And um, that's gonna take between three to five minutes depending on the heat of your stove. Once the onion is translucent, we're going to add our spices and we want to let our spices bloom in the heat um, just so they add a nice nuttiness and toastiness that otherwise we don't get. Uh, when, the, when the spices don't have that opportunity to real, really mingle with the oil. So our spices that we're going to add are cayenne pepper, and I know that you like cayenne pepper, I do. but I also know that your mom is going to be eating this. And so we just wanna open the door to warmth and heat. Um, so we're just gonna start with an eighth of a teaspoon. Right. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine you can, with me. You can always add more, but you can't add less. So that is true. Sam, would you put an eighth of a teaspoon Absolutely. in there? I'm taking the whole lid off. <laughs> if I can get down there, there we go. Okay. Perfect, and, and, and with such restraint. I am impressed. I know. I, I know. tried so hard. I know, it's hurting your feelings to, to hold back That's okay. like that. It's all good. And then we're going to add a teaspoonful of ground cumin. Okay. It's another reacher there. That is a reacher. And cumin has that wonderful toastiness, earthiness, almost a resinous quality to it. 
that really opens up when you add tomatoes. Smells like a solid chili. That's it what does, it smells like. It does. And as we let it toast in the oil, we really want to see the brown color coming out in the oil. And we're just going to let that go. We're not at this point going to add our oregano. We're going to let our sauce simmer first before we add our oregano. We're going to let it go for about 30 minutes before we add our oregano because we don't want to cook out the flavor of the oregano. So right now we're going to add our tomatoes. Here we're using home canned tomatoes, some beautiful home canned tomatoes that your mother did. Yes. They look wonderful. If you don't have home canned tomatoes, you can always buy. Will you dump those in please? Yeah. You can. You can always buy uh, commercially canned tomatoes at the store. You just buy two 14 and a half ounce cans. And there are some really fun flavors at the store right now. I think fire roasted would go really well in this recipe because they'd enhance the smokiness of the peppers. So mm -hmm. if you just stir that in, Sam. And then the next thing you add is a can, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. It's just gonna add some silkiness and some intensity to your sauce. So you add that. And then you'll notice that it, there's always a little left in the can. So you just wanna add some water, like a, a cans, worth, worth, uh, cans worth of water to rinse that out and get all of that tomato sauce out because after all you paid for it, you might as well get everything. Frugal friendly. A frugal friendly, indeed. And that's the beginning of your sauce. Just stir it up, and then uh, if there's a potato masher on your side, yes, 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 um, yes. just give it a good mash every now and then. You don't need to really babysit this sauce, but mashing it, tomatoes, particularly home canned tomatoes, just really want to be a sauce. They want to melt into a sauce. So let it simmer for about 30 minutes. This is a wonderful make-ahead sauce. You can refrigerate it for a couple of days. It freezes beautifully. It doubles up really well. So you can do plan overs. You can do a double or triple batch when you make it and then have plan overs for additional recipes down the line. Um, but let it simmer for about 30 minutes and then you're gonna add a teaspoonful of oregano and let it simmer for another 30 minutes um, and it should reduce by half. So you'll end up with about three cups of sauce and your first component of your crepes will be done. Sam, let's make our second component, which are crepes. And they freeze beautifully. You can refrigerate them as well. And they are as easy as making a pancake. If you can make a pancake, you can make a crepe. I make them in the blender because it's so fast. If you don't want to wash the blender, you can easily just whisk together the ingredients. So let's All just right. blitz them up. All right. We'll start good. with half a cup of milk. You want to dump that in? Yeah. And then we have two beautiful eggs. So if you want to crack those into yes. the, the cup one at a time, just make sure they are beautifully good. And then dump those in. Oh, they look absolutely lovely. That, that was done with tremendous panache. <laughs> <laughs> oh. See, the reason the people like me is because of the comedic effect, not because of me. Beautiful. Okay. This time I'm going to get a little bit um, lower to the... Uh, to, to the to the center of the action. Yeah, oh, there that we was go. that was gorgeous. That was gorgeous. There we go. Okay, we put on the lid. It's an important thing to remember putting on the lid, and and just give that a, a blend until it is nice and frothy. Okay. I think we're there. I think okay. We're there. Perfect. And then just tap this in. This is a quarter cup of flour. Just tap it in. Oh, oh, while, while, the, while the motor's running. So, oh, I understand. Yeah, while the motor's running, tap it in while the motor's running. I would running. assume on low. On low, yeah. You okay. don't want it to go all over the kitchen. That, that's, uh, that's another problem. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Just tap it in. Beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Oh, And those. once it's all in, stop. And you're done. That's it. Et voila. Crepe batter done. And then you just dump it into a wide mouth bowl. 
Cover it loosely with plastic wrap, wax paper, whatever you like to cover things with, and let it rest at room temperature for 30 minutes. Um, you, can, you can use it right away if you want to. It, your crepes will just be a little bit thicker. Um, it, it won't be the end of the world, but resting it just allows that gluten to chill out a little bit. I have some very well rested crepe batter already done. In fact, it's so well rested it might be asleep. Uh, we we want to stir it maybe just a little bit. And we have our crepe pan. This is actually my mother's crepe pan. I'm not going to touch it because I've got it heating up. But you can see how extremely vintage and, and well used that crepe pan is. And so we've got it over medium heat and we're going to test it just to see whether it is ready for us to uh, to cook and to test, we just take a tiny bit of water and hit it on and, and throw it on the pan. And when that water sizzles and dances, we know it's ready for us to cook. Now we want to put just a little bit of oil on it. If you have a pastry brush, you can brush it with oil. Um, I don't like to spray it because it tends to get all over everywhere. This is how my mom did it and it, it just saves me washing a pastry brush. It's put a little bit of oil, this is olive oil, you can use whatever oil you like, on a little bit of paper towel and I just gently brush the skillet. Just being careful not to burn myself going into the corners of the pan and that just gives the, the crepe a fighting chance to get out. And I'm gonna do one and then you're gonna do one. All right. All right. Show me how it's done. So this is how I've always done it. I overflow, swirl, and then outflow. Then right back on the heat and then take the knife to it because it will almost immediately start to dry out. And as it dries, I coax it up. Because you can see it's starting to dry right there. It's, it's overflowed right there, so I don't want it to stick. Back on the heat. Wow, that is paper thin. You want it to be very, very thin because you're just adding to the, um, I got a little bit of stuff on my knife. You're just adding to the, um, the casserole, the egg flavor that you would get from the batter of the, the dipped pepper. And so you don't need it to be very thick. And once you can hold it, you just pick it up and twist it over. That's all you have to do. Oh and just give it a moment to set on the other side. It doesn't need much time at all. And then flip it right out on a plate. That's magic. It's a lot of pressure. If you have some uh, plastic wrap, you're just going to want to cover it over. I don't have any plastic wrap, but I do have this very useful piece of paper. <laughs> so I'm just going to cover it over with a piece of paper just so it doesn't dry out because it is very, very thin. So I'm just going to oil this up for you. Overflow, right. swirl, outflow. Well done. Okay, now swirl it around. Nicely done. Okay, and then. Nicely done. Oh, flow. Bravo. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, I missed a spot though. That's okay. When it's covered with sauce and cheese, who cares? Yeah, that is true. And, and, if, and if it really doesn't work, that's what dogs are for. Athena, come here. <laughs> All right, so you said pretty much immediately you're gonna wanna start. You can see where it's starting to get um, dry. Absolutely, you're, go you're doing it exactly right. Yes. Where it's starting to get dry. Oh, you're doing it you're so well, you're doing it so well. Beautiful, okay. beautiful. So now we're gonna. Just let your knife slip underneath it. Perfect, perfect. Oh, you're a prodigy. You've got just, it. You've got it. 
Oh my goodness. That's absolutely perfect. Let me move that for you. Okay, and then you said it's pretty quick. It's pretty quick. Give it, yep, just give it a twist. Okay. <gasps> absolutely great. Oh my goodness, I did it. You did it. We are at our final stage, which is filling and putting all of this together. For filling, we are using green peppers, and you can either buy them in a can, very shelf stable. Uh, a four ounce can will fill all of this. You can do either diced or whole and then just chop them up, or you can buy fresh uh, peppers in the store. Um, I've got Anaheim here. Uh, poblano would also be delicious. Anaheim is a little bit fruitier. Poblano is a little bit earthier and smokier. Um, you can grow them at home very easily or get them at farmer's markets. Uh, if you use fresh peppers, it's very easy to uh, just roast them at home, put them under the broiler until they blister and turn black, steam them in a bowl, and then the skins just slip right off and the seeds come right out and they freeze really, really well. We're also using some cheese. I'm using Monterey Jack here, which is a lovely melting cheese. Any cheese that adds some creaminess and a lovely melty texture and a little bit of tang will work really, really well. And then we're adding a little bit of onion just for some crunch and some savoriness. But let's fill up our peppers. All right, let's We've got our sauce. It's about about three cups reduced by half and let's start and we've got our lovely crepes so we just start with our crepes and you're going to uh, just give a, a blitz of oil to a six by ten dish and if you want to do the sides too, the sides. And it'll just help us with our dishes. There's, life is too short to do some dishes. Agreed. So we're going to start with a strip of pepper and what we're doing here is instead of stuffing the pepper we're stuffing the crepe. And, gotcha. And then we're going to put a uh, about an ounce, uh, about a quarter of an ounce of cheese on each crepe. So each person is only getting an ounce of cheese uh, as they uh, eat uh, the crepe because we're only using a total for the dish four ounces of cheese, uh, two ounces of it cut up in sticks, and then two ounces of it shredded for the top. So this is actually a low carb dish and it's a fairly economical dish as well. For four people, it's really only about five bucks. So. Then we're going to put just a stripe down, first of all, on our, on our dish. We want to put about a cup on the bottom so that our, our crepes will not burn on the bottom. And then for each of our crepes, we're going to put about a tablespoon down the center and then just a little bit of onion for that crunch and that good taste. And then we're gonna roll them up and put them seam side down into the pan. Do you wanna do one? Yeah. Okay, so we do the pepper. I do just because it gives me a nice linear direction. Something like a little bit of direction on That's there. That's right. All right, so. There's that. Sauce. Sauce? That's what I'm missing. Going down the middle, you think that's enough? Or I think I... that's perfect. You, okay. you want to you know I mean, for about a tablespoonful of sauce. Okay. And, and then, then a little, little bit more, of... However much you like. All right. Okay. And then you just roll it up. Perfect. All right. Great. And you're going to nice. do all eight of them. And then once you're done with all eight of them, you'll have about a cup more. So you've got a cup on the bottom, a cup within each of your crepes. You're going to put a stripe of sauce along the top. I like to leave the edges uh, dry so they get a little bit crispy in the oven. And then you're going to put your shredded cheese on the top. If you have a little bit of cheddar cheese in there, it adds a little bit of extra color. It's pretty. You don't need it. It's just for aesthetics. And then pop it in a preheated 325 degree oven for about 30 to 40 minutes just until the cheese is bubbly and the sauce is all nice and heated through. 
and let it rest for about five minutes so you don't burn the roof of your mouth and the cheese doesn't go off in a little slick. Um, and then serve it with whatever accoutrements you like, whether you like sour cream, a little bit of cilantro and chopped green onions. It goes really well with a side dish of a nice green salad, some chips, um, but it's a lovely warm dish on a cold winter's day. It's done! So this uh, is ready. It serves four and it costs out to about $1.30 a serving. That's um, budget friendly right there. Assuming that you have to buy everything, you know, that you didn't uh, can your own tomatoes, that you don't uh, grow your own peppers. Uh, so for a family of four, just over $5. So it's pretty solid. Just because it's frugal doesn't mean it lacks flavor. Would you like to try it? I would love to try it. All right, let me try to get you a good serving here. Ooh, that looks like a good serving. This has rested for about five minutes. Oh my goodness. I'll get you some of the sauce too. Oh yeah. And we have cilantro, green onions, and sour cream. We're going to dress this Please thing Please help yourself. Thank you. And, oh, and I brought some chips, which Ooh. were not included in the uh, price, but they're just good with everything. So right, We're going to get some, some sour cream. And some, if I can stop clanking the spoons. Some green onions right up there. I will. All right. Give this a gamble. That's good. That's like, it's like a solid enchilada, but better. Well, Rosemary, thank you so much for coming out, um, making the trip to show us how to make this. It's a phenomenal recipe, and if you want the recipe, you can go check out her book, Starting with a Quart of Tomatoes by Rosemary Reeve. If you can your own tomatoes, you will not regret buying this book. If you enjoy tomatoes in your food, you will not regret this book. If you want to learn how to can tomatoes, this is the place to start. This will teach you how to can them, how to use them. Um, overall, just something that you probably should have in your arsenal. So, um, thank you again thank for coming. You. And uh, thank you for teaching me how to make this because I'm definitely so making this again. Me. So, And now for the question of the day. What is your favorite food that you cook where tomatoes is either a base or just a nice finisher? So comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.